you know, getting stuff done at home and being able to keep a work schedule while at home at the same time is at best an arduous task. Getting out to run errands like this is, is almost a luxury at times because it's your only time to get away and kind of have a little time to yourself. The best part about this is that I sat down and I took the time to organize myself. I calendared out these items. I knew this stuff was coming up and I allotted for plenty of time. Usually I give myself 15 to 30 minutes on either side of the, of the scheduled item. And that allows me to have a little leeway in case, you know, Lord forbid I run into somebody I know at the store or maybe I've got a second trip to make. And that gives me, you know, a buffer. So when you're scheduling your items, you want to make sure that you leave yourself a little buffer of time. Because if you leave yourself a buffer of time, you're less likely to fall off schedule. We are starting our series today, a series on how to get started with your business. And we're going to start at the foundation with what you need to do at home. How do you need to get yourself ready to go? What foundation do you need to lay? It's it's kind of kind of a difficult thing if you think about it. I mean, we've been we're so used to being at the office and, and you know having our routine. We don't have a routine. You know, it's at home. Our home routine is our routine. But now we've got to integrate work with it. And, you know, work is kind of a loose term for me because I have a full-time job. And in my full-time job, it is definitely work. It's not necessarily something that, you know, I look forward to every day, but, you know, it's not bad. But the real thing I look forward to is my business, okay? This right here. Being, trying to become an influencer and hopefully teaching somebody something along the way. And that's, that's why I know this business is going to be successful for me because my whole purpose behind it is to try to help people out. <coughs> I want to see everybody that I'm able to come in contact with be more successful than me. If I can do that at least with one person, I'm a success. I don't need to worry about how much I'm going to make or, you know, measuring my success level because my success level is going to be measured on how many people I can make successful. And that's the attitude that I would encourage you to take. How can you help others first? The success will come for you. The money will come. The, the benefits will come. But only if you do it for the right reason. So today, let's take our first dive into a little system I created called the three D's. And I'm gonna outline those in detail. I'm go also going to attach this presentation to the show notes below. So make sure that you download those. And there's gonna be a couple slides in there I really want you to print out, stick up on your wall, okay? Put them someplace where you can see them all the time because that's gonna be your foundation. That's gonna be what keeps you dialed in. And it's, it's gonna help you stay on task keep you focused. So without further ado, let's dive into the presentation. All right, so let's get started. Here's the presentation I was referring to. It's a few PowerPoint slides that are referring to working from home and using my system of the three D's in order to identify and start working through some of the problems that you may or may not be having with, um, you know, trying to learn how to work from home. This is probably where you're at right now. You're at home and at work at the same time. How is this supposed to play out? Kids are now homeschooled. There are house items that need tending to. There's just too many distractions to focus at work like you're actually at work. So where do you start? Here's the problem. First is the mindset. You have to learn to overcome the mental block of quote unquote work while at the home environment. Your day is only going to go as well as you start it. Okay. You need to, you need to start your day like you would any other work day, just like you were going to the office. If you get up in the morning and you shower, you shave, or, you know, for you ladies, you get your makeup on, you do your hair and you prepare yourself to be presentable and in the mindset for going to work. This isn't entirely different from what you're going to do at home just because the place has changed doesn't mean that anything else has 
And so a lot of these methodologies that you use and have adapted over adapted to over time in getting yourself going for work in an office setting can apply to your work there at home. So if you get up and you get a good start, you have your cup of coffee, you get cleaned up, you get yourself presentable, and then you go into your office. This time it's just the one across the hall instead of the one, you know, 20 miles away. You're still going to be in the same mindset. You're still going to have the same level of productivity. And it, it does take a little getting used to, but once you do, you're going to see how it's just, it's not as different as you think. One of the things you have to overcome with your mindset is those at home obstacles. They, they interfere with work. They just simply do. And this is going to be the part that can be the hardest part for a lot of you. You are trying to get yourself deeply ensconced into whatever it is you're doing for work. At the same time, you've got your little one, mommy, the cat just threw up on the rug or whatever it is. So you've got to learn to navigate those things mentally and how to hit the pause button on your work, go handle that and come back. Sometimes that's necessary, but we're also going to talk about ways that you can avoid having those kind of things happen. Part of the problem too is organizing yourself. Have you done anything to prepare to work at home? Have you done anything to organize yourself? Have you got yourself a a space to work in? Have you set aside time? Have you talk to your other family members about how how you need to be at work while you're at home too. I mean, it's it's going to be something that affects the entire family. So, there's a little preparation that goes into that. And what about your direction? Do you have a direction? Do you know what it is you're trying to accomplish? Are you wanting to get yourself accomplished in a certain way is there something i mean you you need to set out and define some goals okay here's what i want to complete today here's my one day goal here's my one week goal here's my one month and my one year goal sit down and set set out those write those down put those in a journal get get yourself a file on your computer that has your goals clearly and definitively outlined and put it somewhere where you can look at it daily that way you know exactly what you're working for why you're doing it and why it's so important to keep at it and not and not get frustrated by one little thing and then fall off the pace. The pace has got to be consistent. Consistency is the key to making this work. So that leads us right into what are you trying to accomplish? Are you wanting to start a business or are you trying to just become an influencer in a certain in a certain field or a certain niche? It's you have to define that as well as as your goals. So if if you know what it is you're trying to accomplish, it's it's kind of like those goals, you know. It's like this is what I'm setting out to do. This is what I want to this is how I want to make my mark. And another thing you need to consider are those daily goals, are they realistic? I mean, if you set yourself out for 15 things today and you don't have the ability to carry through on those, you may only get seven done. And what happens when you got half of your list that's incomplete? You're going to feel like you didn't get everything done. So the next day, maybe you only want to set a, set a series of goals that are five deep instead of 14. You know, you can finish those goals. And if you have time left over, maybe you could pick up some of the ones that you want to do for tomorrow. Another thing to consider is the tools. Have you taken the time to properly garner the tools you need to to be a successful at-home worker do you have a designated workspace do you have a home office it could be something as simple as you know i'm going to take these two hours and i'm going to take over the kitchen table okay i i'm going to put the kids you know that's going to be their time to watch a movie to play on their ipads their their time to do their thing and that will keep them occupied so that you can constructively get some work done in an effective fashion you know, that designated workspace can can mean a lot of things to a lot of different people. For me, I have I have an office space uh, that we have in one of our extra bedrooms that um, I share with my wife. And that is a, uh, you know, that that is a real asset to have that designated workspace. We can shut the door. We have, you know, we have a TV. We have music in here that that we that will help us work. And we've set that up for ourselves. We prepared for that. So now it's time to get it done, get it done, get it done. We got to start taking care of business. All right. We've, we've kind of got, 
some things for us to think about, uh, as we saw in the last slide, and it's time to move forward. We got to start getting things done. So, um, here, here's our mountain. Okay. And I thought about putting a clever graphic in here and everything, but you see the word, the mountain that's, that's just, a, that's big, big enough and insurmountable enough to, to give you the visual that you need to think about here. But what you need to do is, is you need to start climbing that mountain and your mountain consists of defining your roadblocks and you need to learn to prioritize their importance and in function in, in your daily life and then put a plan into action based on those priorities. Okay. You've tried to work, you've got distractions, you know, you have tried to work and distractions, family and household responsibilities get in the way. How do you do it when you all, when you actually went to work? Okay. When you were getting up, going to the office, how, how did you do that? Okay. Spell that out for yourself. You know, I got up, I took a shower, I, I had a cup of coffee, I shaved, I stepped outside and I took a breath of fresh air before I went out to the car, whatever. Well, how did you do that? How did you keep it separated and together at the same time? You know, most people identify that with the two separate physical locations, and that's not always the case. And as you can see now, the whole reason you're here is because it's no longer the case. Your physical location is now the same place. How did you do all that? Figure out what that method was, and you could almost universally use those same methods to work at home. And so now we dive into my system of the three D's. Define the roadblocks, divide and conquer, dive in and defeat. Those are my three D's. The three D's are here to set yourself up to succeed, okay? The first challenge you have is D number one, define the roadblocks. What detracts your thinking about work in your home environment? And these are all things that I suggest that you make a note of in some way. Either, you know, take notes on your computer, open up Microsoft, you know, OneNote, or maybe you're using Google Keep or, or Tasks or whatever. Whatever it is you're using, even open up Notepad on Windows and start taking notes, okay? And the notes are coming from within you, okay? Def you need to define what things constantly pull your attention while you're at home, okay? You know, oh, it's my kids, or, you know, my dog seems to need to get walked all the time, or, you know, I've got responsibilities with, you know, the you know, the Cub Scouts for, for my son, or, or you get, you know, you've got these other things that are distracting you from focusing on work at home. Write them all down, okay? Make sure you get a very complete list, because the last thing you want is to think you got it all licked, you got it all identified, and then something pops up, oh, that wasn't on my list, what do I do now? So this is a really good preparation phase. You're defining all of your roadblocks that are keeping you from being productively at work at home. And then you need to figure out how do you deal with those distractions when you don't have work at home? How are you eliminating those as roadblocks? And then in challenge number two, this is D number two, divide and conquer. First thing you needed to do is define your home responsibilities, okay? What are the things that when you're focused on being at home, on your family, on your livelihood outside of work, what are the things that you absolutely have to get done? What are the things that you are responsible for making sure are completed or handled? Write them down. Write a, write a heading of home responsibilities and fill out that list. Next, you define your work responsibilities. What are the things you need to finish at work? How, how do you go about making sure that everything is done at work and that your boss is happy, you know, and the only difference now is that you're going to be your boss. You don't have a boss to answer to. So if things don't get done, your business fails. And so everything becomes much more important. It becomes much more detrimental. It's, it's becomes more of a sense of urgency for you. So define those work responsibilities and, that's going to be defining what it is you need to accomplish for your business. And, you know, and make this a more general thing, you know, because in the beginning, this is all a development thing. What, what do I need to develop today? What do I need to put into action today? How do I need to get my business set up today? You need to define where those work and home responsibilities cross and interfere with one another. This helps identify points of conflict. Okay. This and that's going to be the important thing, because if you see where there's a nexus of of the home and work, 
and how those collide and create, you know, dystopia within you, it's going to help you figure out how to overcome the issue. Okay. And that leads us into challenge number three, D number three, dive in and defeat. So now that you've identified what those responsibilities are and where they are crossing over and creating conflict, you can create a plan of action. Okay. This is, you know, th- this is what I'm going to do on, on the, on the daily to get myself up and moving. And then when I hit that nexus where I'm getting the conflict, what's going to be the priority at the time? What is going to be the way that I, that I handle that conflict? How am I going to separate them, prioritize them and get everything handled correctly? And the best way to do that is to create a to-do list or a calendar or a task manager. Okay. Use a to-do list, a calendar or a task manager app or software to help you visualize your tasks and then prioritize them. Okay. If you get these things down and you can see where, where those important things are and you say, okay, number one, I have to make sure my, my chat, my children are fed. Okay. That's a pretty high priority. <laughs> and that goes into the home category. And then it's going to be, you know, for, and then you're going to have your categories in the business, you know, number one, check my email. Do I have any, any contacts I need to make? Is there anything that demands my immediate attention? You know, that's going to be in the work priority list. And as you work through those two lists, you're going to see where, oh, geez, there's a conflict here. How am I going to deal with that? That's where you're going to prioritize. Okay. What is going to be more important for me to do at that time? I have a three o'clock appointment to take my child to tutoring, but I also have a three o'clock uh, conference call with two clients on their next counseling session or their next uh, coaching session. And how am I going to do that? All right. So what I might do, especially if I can identify it in the morning, I'm giving some lead time for those clients to say, Hey, could we bump this to three 30 or four o'clock and, and you know, see if that works out and you can start working through the problem. Maybe you can do it before, maybe you can do it early, but prioritizing those things is going to help you keep credibility with your clientele. It's going to help keep your credibility with your spouse, which is a good thing. And um, it's going to make sure that things get done in a timely fashion and nothing gets missed. So the dive in and defeat is going to be very important in spelling out. Okay. Now it's time to put it all together and make it happen. Okay. It's time for implementation. You're going to start building. Okay. This is going to be a building of your daily schedule, a building of your methodologies. That's going to this is the first steps in, in figuring out how to work through your day and navigate it, you know, effectively and productively. Okay. Here we have a, something of a a timeline or a flow chart, I guess is a better way to look at it. This is my three D's flow chart. All right. So it, it really goes through how I've kind of enumerated the whole process for you. Okay. And, and, and I'm going to put this, this whole presentation into a file that you can download and it'll be made available to you um, so that you can have it for yourself and you can look at this because this is a very simple way, a very graphic way of, of, uh, of, uh, of going through this whole process in a simple and understandable fashion. So here you can see we have defined what home and family need. Okay. So we've done that. We've got our list of priorities there. We've got work define what work, what needs to be done for work. We've got that list of priorities. Next, we see where those things cross over and we find the conflict nexus. The conflict nexus is where the work needs and the home and family needs kind of cross over and create something of a dichotomy or a, uh, not a dichotomy, but a, uh, a conflict that, that makes it difficult to move forward on either one. So you're going to have to separate those and decide where your priorities lie with those. Now, it's easy to say that your family and home needs come first, but if you're also working at home, that can be a tough distinction to make. So separate them, prioritize them, and decide which one you need to move on first. And that is the next phase, is when you're prioritizing those points of conflict and scheduling them or tasking them accordingly. After you get them prioritized and you've got them separated and kind of sorted out, it's time for action. You've got to put all this stuff into motion. You've got to make it happen. There's, it's just, it's, you know, waiting time is done. Research time is done. Trying to find better solutions is done. It's time to move forward. Now, these are some questions that come up. 
quite often, actually, when I talk to people about what, what I'm working on here. And they say, how can I possibly prioritize anything work-related over my family or household? And the answer is relatively simple. It's, it's just the same way you used to do it before. You know, you're just not driving into an office anymore. You are, you're just, you know, going across the hall into your home office or down to your kitchen table and opening your laptop instead of, you know, driving into an office and checking a time clock and all that other stuff. So, you know, you kind of use it the same way when you have work to do and you've scheduled that time aside, you've got to get things done. You know, it's frankly, if the house can't run, the house can't run if the work don't get done. Okay. That is, you just, you have to keep that in mind. So make sure you prioritize work where you need to prioritize it and communicate with your family so that they understand why you're doing what you're doing. And, uh, things have a way of working out with that. Question number two is how do I deal with the schedule interruptions? People stuff happens. Okay. I know you've heard it put a slightly different way, but both at work and at home, we are, we're constantly dealing with schedule changes and reprioritizing things all the time, whether or not we realize it, you could have something as simple as a flat tire and it, causes you to back your schedule up and maybe you run late for that gymnastics, you know, tournament, or maybe you, you know, you're late getting dinner home because you had to stop and get dinner that night. It's just, it happens. So you kind of roll with those changes. You reprioritize and you move forward. Don't spend a lot of time digressing on stuff, but you know, if you got to make a change, you got to make a change and make it happen. Try to play catch up best you can, but you know, don't add any stress to it. I can't get started in the morning. What's the key? Now, I would say that a higher degree of people are not morning people than those that are. I I tend to do better in the morning. Um, I'm probably one of the few that do. I like getting up early in the morning. I like getting an early start. Um, Sometimes I just need to sleep. It happens. But one of the big thing is, is you don't need to stay in your jammies. Okay, get up get your pants on or jump in the shower, get cleaned up, brush your teeth, comb your hair. Ladies, you know, do your makeup, get your hair done, whatever it is you do to prepare yourself for a work day and and do it. Just because you're at home doesn't mean that needs to change. That is what's going to help you stay on task. That routine is so vital and such a key into getting a great start and being productive all throughout your day. Are there ways to stay in the zone and avoid distractions? Sure, there is. You you can do, you know, you, you can do this by, you know, several methods. You know, the one that I use is called the Pomodoro technique. It, it's where you will work or be productive for short bursts of time, relatively, uh, I guess you could say about 20 to 25 minutes. You know, sometimes it's less for some people, sometimes a little more. But then you take like a five or 10 minute break And you do that, you know, you rinse and repeat about four times and then you take a longer break, you know, maybe 15, 20 minutes and get through your day that way. Get through your allotted work time that way. I think you're going to be incredibly amazed at how productive and how much stuff you get done. It's it it blew my mind when I actually put it into put it into play. And I've been holding true to that since. So, you know, that might be something to look into. And I will be diving into that particular technique to some depth in a future episode. So um, we'll be touching on that one again. So what's next? What are the next steps? What's going to happen after you dial yourself in, lay your foundation, and you're sitting there at your desk and you're ready to move? What do you do then? Well, in the next episode, I'm going to talk about creating the mindset. All right. We've laid the foundation for that mindset in this first episode but actually getting there and laying it down and, and putting your mind dialed in and focused is, is going to be where all the magic happens. And this is what has come to be known as the flow state. And you're going to learn how to do this and get into a flow state at will relatively quickly. There's a lot of resources on this, and I'm going to share some of the most important ones with you, especially the ones that got me there. And when I get into the flow state, I, it's almost hard to interrupt me because when I'm done, I'm done. 
And sometimes so much time will have passed. I'm like, it blows my mind, but at least I've gotten things done and I feel like I've, I'm accomplished and I've, you know, I've set out, I've done what I've set out to do. So, Hey guys, thanks a lot. It's been a blast having you for this episode. I really hope you join me for the next one. And please don't forget to like and subscribe. We'll see you next time.